Yes, today we're joined by Glenn's Vodka League One Manager of the Month for January and one of my favourite managers, John McGlenn. John, how are you doing all right? I'm good, Simon. Thanks very much for coming along today and uh, looking forward to it. I've always, uh, I've always wanted to interview you because I'll be honest with you, I watch every one of your post-match interviews. Right. I always find them quite intriguing. Right, right, right. Uh, just, do you I enjoy that I'm part of the management side? No, really, no. No, I could kind no. of tell that after <laughs> games. Uh, <laughs> I think I'm a boring sod, so... Uh, no, but you're always quite honest, which I love, eh? Oh, I'm honest. Uh, uh -huh. I, yeah, I'm definitely honest. I, I think you've... You've got to be honest. I think people will see through you if you're no. Uh, the punters are no daft. Yeah, uh, they're sitting watching the game as well. Fortunate enough this season, we've had a lot of you know more good results than bad results. As you say, Falkirk flying just now. This is your fourth manager of the month award, unbeaten in January, eight points clear at the top of the league. Uh, great time to beat the club, eh? Absolutely. Yeah. No, everything's going along fine. So far, so good. As a sort of saying, you know, because there's a long way to go. I'm going yeah. to get too carried away, massive game coming up at the weekend. But the guys have been fantastic, yeah, right for pre-season training. Biggest thing is recruitment, biggest thing bringing the players in that we brought in uh, to add to what we had kind of like developed in the first season. Yeah. Because we, from where the club was when we came in, finishing sixth uh, in the league, that was the season where you, you would have played for Peterhead against yeah. Falkirk. Uh, there's a, a lot of work to get done and a, a lot of improvement to get done. And we very quickly got that, and I think getting to the Scottish Cup final, semi final was was quite a big achievement. Uh, unfortunately, finished second uh, to Dunfermline. The playoffs didn't go as well as we would have liked, but a bit of work to get done in the summer, getting more players in. And this season, almost with day one, the guys have kind of clicked and we've been playing some some really good football, attractive attacking football. Mm. We've got a lot of pace in our team. Uh, we've got a lot, a lot of good football players, so. That's the way we want to we want to play, uh, and the, the you know the players enjoy playing in it. And uh, I see who, who came in the summer has done really well. McIver up front loved him at Aloha. Brad Spencer, who you had at Rafe, always liked him as a football player. Yeah, Brad. Like handsome at the back. What's his name? Tom, Tom Lan. Tom, yeah, aye. That seems to be the impression of Tom. I gets <laughs> modelling wee jobs to do every now and again. I aye, see him so. on Instagram every now and again. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. How, do you, how, how do you take to that? Nah, Tom's Tom's a great lad, eh? Is he? He's a great lad. He's a great professional. He's uh, exactly what we thought he would be. hundred percent. I knew him from Wraith Rovers, obviously. Yeah, he'll go through brick walls for you, and uh, he's made a big, big difference to the defence. Brad is just a, a very, very, very good football player. Yeah. just take the ball anywhere. See his pass. He's got a great range of pass. He's uh, got two, three goals this season as well for midfield. I don't think he got a goal the season before at the Rovers. Uh, so the, the, these guys were, were, were key, were very much key. And I knew what was bringing in, you know. Uh, Big Ross, on the other hand, we watched him a number of times at Aloha. Yeah. We liked what we saw. He didn't necessarily always play as a number nine. He was more a ten than Big Salmon playing around Big Salmon. Uh, whereas he basically came in here and played a, you know, a number nine. And he's he's got a lot to his game. His uh, link-up play is really, really good. He's good in the air. He's got a fair share of goals, probably like more goals, like mm. any other manager. We, we think maybe he should be getting in the amount of balls that we put in the box. We think he should be getting more goals. Yeah, me and Tom Lang have actually got a couple of modelling jobs coming up together, so <laughs> I'll look after him for you. All right? <laughs> <laughs> so, I, we're going to get to your playing career in a minute, but just last bit on your coaching. Like, that won't take long. <laughs> <laughs> We've uh, obviously spoke to Ange and he was all about sticking to your philosophy. We spoke to other managers say sometimes you need to adapt to the players that you've got. Where, where do you stand on that? Obviously you came in, like you said, Falkirk were six in the league. Did you have to change your kind of ideas because of the squad you had at the time or were you setting this is how we're playing regardless of the players that we've got? Well I think when I came in we needed to have, we, we just worked the way we work, you know, so we had to just put our stamp on it and the players that Falkirk had, had actually were reasonably good football players, you know, they would be uh, quite content to, to play that way, they would be quite happy. To play the way we wanted to play, the type of player that they had, mm. they probably need a little bit more steel and guile and a bit more dig about them rather than, uh, you know, the tactical side of it. I'm not saying that we, we didn't, of course we did, but I think that side, they were very much open-minded to what we wanted to do. So we just came in and, again, put our style on it type thing. When you bring, we brought in Big Cole, so Big Cole's always going to take the ball for the back, he's always going to play for the back. Yeah, yeah, he can go long, but he's... You know, he's very, very comfortable on the ball. I've known Cole from Livingston, he is at Livingston, when he was a young boy at Livingston, when I was a the manager there, and uh, he went on to QPR, and then, you know, come back up the road and done United and Ross County and such like Inverness, all these type of teams. So, I knew what I was getting, I knew that he would be one who would be taking the ball and wanting to wanting to play for the back, yeah. So, 
again, even in that time, bringing the right players in was, was very, very important. Uh, but yes, we did go about our own philosophy, but again, you know, the longer you're in it, the more ways you can find to win a football match, then it, it opens things up. And mm. you can't be too predictable. You've got to be able to throw a little spanner in the spokes, you know, that you're not too predictable, you know. Yeah, we, you're not we, always we, playing it for the back. You can also go in behind yeah. and go up to a big striker who can get a hold of it and runners off on you. Absolutely, absolutely. We know no. what we're talking about, John. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why you have too many... You mean you're going to the top. Oh, too many secrets, you know, but uh -huh. aye, exactly. Exactly that, yeah, exactly that. And then with Big Ross... We've got that. He's yeah. one of the best in the air that have come across. You can hang in the air and win headers. And we've got speed. Yeah, you know, we've got speed with the wingers uh, in both Morrison's sides. Good. Morrison's buying machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Calvin's nice and they slouch either. Ethan Ross is quick. Alfie's quick. So you know it puts fear of death into and the defenders. Defenders doing a light pace. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, right, the playing days. No many people know, but you actually spent your youth career at Bolton. I was seventeen when I went there. Right, seventeen. I was uh, playing behind the ears. I well, you know that goal. I was playing in Musselburgh Windsor, uh, boys club football. Right. I was a U I was a Dundee United S forum for fourteen to sixteen. Uh, I got released at that point. Uh, Jim McLean was the manager and uh, said I wasn't quick enough, which he was right. Uh, but I got a chance. I was played a a, a game for Wraith Rovers, believe it or not, uh, against a kind of five select, and I and I did well. However, there was a Bolton Wanderers scout there, and. Uh, on the Saturday I was doing to Bolton, played in the third team in a game, did well, back up the road, back down for the Tuesday, played in a reserve game against Coventry, City at, at Highfield Road, and uh, did well, and I got signed, and I was there for about a year and a half, it didn't quite work out, it didn't quite make the first team, but it was, for every young boy who wanted to be a football player, it was, it was a dream come true to be a, yeah. a full time football player, it didn't quite work out, and I came back up the road, I had three seasons at, at Berwick, so what what league would Berwick have been in then? Because they've been up and doing. They were actually in what would be the championship now. They were in, oh, they were they, in right? the first division at that particular time. Right. Yeah. Uh, bottom, unfortunately, or well, bottom. And what position did you play? Uh, I was playing in midfield then. Centre mid. Yeah, midfield and to the left a little bit. Right. You know. Yeah, lefty. Left uh, right. well, I practiced so much on my left that I got, became. Two footed. Very, I'm very two footed. I. Very, very two footed. Billy Bruno will tell you that. Uh, Is that who your manager was? <laughs> <laughs> Muscle but I, but I know, I know Billy, there was a connection right. with Billy and, and Jim Jeffries, uh, and that's how I got into Hearts actually. Right. So they were they were like family friends, if you want. You know, I'd known, I, I'd known them for a wee while, to be fair. Jim Jeffries was my manager when I played the uh, local team, Wallerford Bluebells, uh, Wallerford Colts. I when, spoke about them on here when he kept on an interview. Huh? That's right. I? Yeah, he spoke yeah. about that team. Huh? So that was like under 14s, yeah, under 14s, I. So Jim was the manager then when he was playing at Hearts. That, that was how I got an opportunity to get into Hearts. So I went in at under-16 level uh, when the first sort of youth initiative started up a wee way back. And uh, at that time, Hoosty was the under-18 coach and Paul Higgerty was the first team coach. Paul went to Aberdeen with Willie Miller. Hoosty stepped up and I got the under-18 job. That's how we ended up competing against teams like uh, you know, yourself, the team. Yeah, yeah. So they, they, they gave me a footing in the door, uh, Jim and Billy. And... Uh, they won the Scottish Cup in, in, in 98, which was uh, great. So it was just then when I actually went kind of like full time. And so, yeah. That you, was were you working as well, John? Did you have a, did you I, have a job? So you had a day back, job? I, when, I, when I left school at 16, uh, I, I wasn't in, in Bolton then. So I started as a, a, an apprentice plumber. Right. And when I came back up for Bolton, I got my apprenticeship back because uh, Berwick worked part time. So it was a part-time job and I got back into the same company that I worked with at that particular time. So I, I continued my working on the city and guilds. When I was at Bolton, I went to the college there uh, one day a week. Right. I uh, went on a Thursday to keep that up. So it was just as well because I, I needed to fall back on it. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, I was a qualified plumber and eventually, you know, uh, I was self-employed, running jobs, the whole thing, and then trying to balance that way. With the football as well, kind of two nights a week and taking teams. Uh, That's fine, it? Yeah, when you're playing and then eventually further down the line, my brother started up a youth team and I got volunteered to, to coach that youth team. And so that was the start of my coaching when I was about 26, maybe even maybe slightly younger than that, which in the 80s was really young. I mean, yeah. nowadays guys are going into the coaching really, really young. When they're maybe, maybe, never even, maybe even earlier eh, than that. So, uh, but then I kind of can you stop playing early? I didn't really need to, but I started to enjoy the coaching side of it. Yeah. And 
it was just too much to balance off playing and coaching because mm -hmm. I, I did that for a season but like you were never you were never in and uh, obviously you you go to keep the wife happy and everything else uh, so, well, you need to keep her happy but, uh -huh. you know got to say over the years she's been very patient with me that's for sure on the full time side of things was that a big decision to go full time and kind of put the business aside yeah well it was again what you always wanted to do yeah. you know for getting the opportunity to, to actually be a full time player didn't quite work out to any great level but when you get involved in the coaching it would be the next best thing would be to be able to coach full time and so again I because financially it probably took a hit financially to come in low down to try and climb that ladder yep. which was quite a big gamble which was very very similar to when I went from being a coach to being a manager uh, at Hearts at the time I'd kind of like gone up the ladder I was been working with George Burley uh, when he came in at Hearts and then Valdas after that, uh, Graham Ricks actually, and then Valdas and won the Scottish Cup that year. And then Edward Malafief came in and then the Wraith Rovers job came up and so there was a gamble there. You know, it probably still, it was the start of the first time I'd kind of earned any sort of real decent money when I was uh, in that position at Hearts. Uh, and I took a hit financially Again. to go to Wraith Rovers as, 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 as a manager in, in League One. So there was a bit of hit there as well. But it was always for the ambition and for uh, you know to do the job that you always wanted. So uh, just finally made the wife happy again with the wages going up, and then you told her you're going back to being skint. Uh, that's it. For football, that's it. Just that's on it. that youth team, that's who was uh, who were some of the, uh, your favourite players that you coached there? Some big names: Lee Wallace, Andrew Hi, Lee Driver. Wallace, Andrew Driver. I know that I would coach Craig Gordon, but Craig Gordon is the one who's probably you know done the absolute most. He was a he was a goalkeeper in the in the youth team. The, Team that won the Scottish Cup, the Youth Cup in the year 2000, beating Rangers 5-3 at Hamden, yep. And could you tell back then he would be like top oh, level? Absolutely, yeah. What uh, was it about Barring that he was just as thin as a rake, I mean, Craig's probably hardly put on any weight, maybe now, maybe. But he was, uh, oh, he's just instinctive uh, goalkeeper, but he was a, a very much, you know, physically a late developer. Mm. Yeah, but... Was he, so he, was, he was small? Oh, aye. Was he absolutely, at that age? Yeah, he was tiny and like that. Wow. Yeah. What about uh, Cal Mellick says to ask you about the time that you thought Sivy got locked in the dryer? <laughs> 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 yeah, exactly. Exactly. So in the changing rooms, uh, the old time castle changing rooms, uh, there was heating pipes that go through there. And of course, that's where the kit man would always wash the kit and stick it in there. It would dry overnight and we'd have his kit already for the next again day. So uh, boys being boys, the, guy, the younger guys are always there late in the afternoon. We would train in the afternoon. We would be double sessions. We'd be doing it pinky in the morning and come back up and maybe go along to Stockton and then they would come back and the guys would all be like, you know, boys being boys. And uh, the guy saying, oh, but somebody's in the, in the kit room. Because uh, I was kind of looking for him, looking for him type thing. Yeah. Must have been sorry. I can't remember exactly why, why, but I was looking for him. Anyway. He goes in, uh, I goes in, and can't he find him? All oh, the kit's in there, but he's actually got in and he's hiding, of course. I've kind of like uh, threw a wobbler at the end of that, and everyone was out in the, running around the track. I was, they, got, they got me raging, so uh, I, that, was, that was one of the moments that, that kind of happened. So they were all out in the track running around. So that didn't happen again. Yeah, brilliant. Loads, loads of these guys, as you mentioned, Driver and Callum and they guys went to the Malt Cup, they won the Malt Cup, that, that team won the Malt Cup. Uh, so, yeah, but yeah, I still like to think that now, yeah, the, 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 even the guys we've got here, they've got to want to come to training, eh? they've got to want to come, they want to come with a smile on their face. They didn't want to be coming into something that's completely regimented and do this, do that, do this, do that, you know. Yeah. You're getting fined for this, you're getting fined for that. You know, the guys look after the dressing room, the police the dressing room. We've got Steve McGinn in the dressing room. Oh my God, you know, he's yeah, 35 yeah. going on 15. Uh -huh. You know. Is he? Aye. Well, he's quite oh, serious he's when he gets done All there. the nonsense. Is all he? the oh, nonsense. Oh, he's... Well, that, that's what I know. Right. You know, that's what I know. Uh -huh. yeah, he's in cahoots with Callum Morrison, the kit man's in there, Gary Oliver, Calvin. Aye, the usual. Usual suspects. Deep heat in the boxers and. No, yours. Not mine, no, 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 within the dressing room, oh, right, within okay. their dressing room. I used to ask room. for my boxers to be deep tea. I quite, like, I quite enjoyed it, man, that <laughs> feeling on your boss. <laughs> it, it must have gave you a buzz, so when you see that the careers that some of the boys went on to have. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, yeah, and you know, you see now guys have come through, whether it's Man United, Chelsea, Man City, they didn't always play for 
for Chelsea or Man City, but they all kind of go on and kind of make a living for themselves. And I think that's good. You know, I think it's good. Like you know, there's you've helped develop them. Even some guys who didn't make it in football, but they've had a good grounding in life. Yeah. Because uh, there's a lot of transferable skills that you can put any young guys who maybe didn't make it in football, but they maybe go on into some other career and uh, and go doing that route. Yeah, and yeah. I've met guys in the past and they'll say, oh. It, you know, I was delighted about that ground, and it helped me when I went into you know whatever they went into. To be honest with you, so that that speaks volumes as well because you didn't need a bit of discipline. And so, what was that, John? Just like hard work and showing up on time. Hard, and yeah, exactly. Hard work, yeah, standards, good standards. I suppose a bit of old school, and I and I do have still a bit of old school about me, and I think there's there's a good there's a place for that. What as would well. that be in terms of going off your nut? No, no, I think I've, I've meowed a little bit, right. but then we've had a good season, so there's no really been any real reason to be going off your head, but in the past, yeah, probably, but as I say, we're having such a good season, it's not really necessar been necessary, really. Mm. Uh, uh, you said as well, you started to work with the first team at that time, so who, who was it that gave you the call to go and help out, first team in terms of manager? It, it hurts. Yeah. Craig Levine went to Leicester, John Robertson came in with Donald Park, and again, they were really good guys Lucky to work with. Guy. Yeah, unbelievable. Great yeah, guy. Fantastic, absolutely. But that only lasted a short period, because that was in the changeover between Chris Robinson and uh, and Romanoff. And so, Robert was a bit unlucky. You know, he was only there a few months, and Romanoff came in, and he brought in George Burley, and George was great, and he had a... Uh, Simon Hunt came in as... Well, like, Simon was like... Had a recruitment type of thing, but he was officially assistant manager so I worked on the training ground way George George Burley and uh, they had a great start to the season amazing start remember, to the season I remember it yeah but for whatever reason it didn't just quite work out they didn't see eye to eye as in George and, and, and Romanoff and uh, I was put in the caretaker manager for three four games uh, and then Graham Rex came in and I worked under Graham Caviar Paul Hartley says he used to shout that at the time, that's Kevin. <laughs> 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 aye, well, aye, Graham was a great guy as well. Jim Duffy came in for a, a spell to help out because, again, Graham and Romanov eventually didn't see eye to eye and, of course, they brought in uh, Jim as somebody who then was be a go in between them, in between the two of them. A guy for Postle in between a, a Lithuanian and, aye, and a Londoner, aye, right? Aye, exactly, <laughs> aye, exactly. So, again, that ended in tears as well, unfortunately. And then Valdas, who had been along in the background all the way through the season, Valdas went in and assisted Valdas that year. So, uh, won the Scottish Cup that year. I think we split the, the old firm that year. Yeah, yeah, that's and, right. And uh, it was a, a great season. You know, it was a great season. Before we get on to Romanov, but see, in terms of players wise, when you first jumped up to that first team, because they were good players at that time, who, who impressed yeah. you? Who, who, who was really good? Yeah, obviously, Stephen Presley. Paul yeah, Hartley yeah, said it. again Craig had uh, worked with these guys and these guys were fairly well they knew the drill type thing but then when George came in and the signings that they brought uh, Edgar Jankowskis had won the, the Champions League with Porto oh. Roman Bednar was some player Michael Pospisil Takas Visas the two other Lithuanians uh, Szczesnowskis uh, yeah. Saul McLunas uh, all these guys came in and the team a long way Elvis and Paul Hartley and Craig Gordon and Goals and Robbie Nielsen, Nielsen and guys like Neely uh, McFarlane, Jamie McAllister, Andy Webster. Yeah. I mean, you've got a back your defence there. You've got like Craig Gordon and Goals, Elvis and Andy Webster. You know, both internationalists and Paul Hartley. You know, Scottish internationalists and then the guys that they brought in ended up a very very exciting team. Yeah, you know, a really really exciting top team. team that. Yeah, it was. I, I remember it the was, two strikers and, were a real handful. Both big oh, boys went to the and Yankovic. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, and Michael Pospisil, who was a, a striker as well, and then Rudy Scatchel. I mean, how can you miss out Rudy Scatchel? You know what a player he was. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, so it was great to work with the, the, the guys. Was the standard of, uh, training incredible? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, uh, so. uh, Romanoff obviously Jim Jeffries told a couple of amazing stories about him clapping him because he was the basketball world champion. Uh, there's a few others that he told discos and stuff like that. What, what was your recollection? Of I didn't Romanoff? have too many dealings with, with Romanoff. It was always maybe more at a higher level. I, I did go with go John Murray one when I, when I was the manager. I went across to to Lithuania to to meet him. It was mainly we obviously didn't speak any English, so it was probably through Sergey uh, at the time, who was like our CEO type thing. Uh, he was a decent a decent guy. Uh, 
No, I mean, so I didn't have any great dealings. It was more contractual talks, players getting contracts and that. And that was near the, t- the tail end of the, the thing. That was in the second, the second time around right. uh, for myself. The second time around. The first time around, as I say, it was more like the manager, uh, whether it be George or Graham or Valda. I say, can you dealt with him? You, you got a little bit of feedback. But it was like the witch doctor who would come in and... Uh, tell guys that they're going to do their hamstring at the weekend by putting their thumb into this machine and that that type of thing was more what I was aware of than, than anything sort of higher more, than more so secretive or whatever tell boys you, they were going to ah, you had, they had this machine that they could put your finger in and then they could tell you well, you can't play at the weekend because your, your, your hamstrings are ready to go that, that type of thing was you know and would that information get used would pl- yeah. players not play because of that no, machine I, yeah, yeah. And that, that's probably why there's bits and pieces of phone it with a manager type thing you know because the manager would be saying no I, I want him to play when they give me the weekend I need him to play uh, that type of thing that yeah, type yeah, of yeah. thing you know I'm not saying exactly that but that type of thing would be something that would rock the apple cart you know that would that would that would be like know what we're used to you so know. Who, who gave who gives you the shout to then take the team the first uh, time round you remember I got a phone call to go up to uh, the Damahoy because we used the Damahoy you know, for our pre-match meals, home at, well, home and ending sort of local away from home, we, we, we would go there. Uh, Phil Anderton, Phil Anderton, David Suller, some, some of them, at the time the guys were all involved uh, at the club, uh, so I'd have got a phone call to go up there, and then it would, I'd just, I, would, I would be told I'd be taking the team that day, uh, we played Dunfermline at home. We Did were, that take you by surprise? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. But Cause it, cause it wasn't, you wouldn't normally ha- that wouldn't normally happen on a day of a game. That happened on a Saturday oh, morning. On a Saturday morning. This was a Saturday morning when, they, when you know, George Burley and Hearts party company, you know. Uh, so that was that morning. And, and so you were going to the, the Damohoy anyway because we'd normally meet there. Yeah. You know, but, but obviously a lot earlier than normal. And uh, they were sort of like, this is what's happening. He's going out, you're taking the team. On you go. But I had a good rapport with the players. I'd been working with the players, some of the younger ones coming through whoever was, would be involved so and Elvis was great Elvis guys like Elvis and Paul Hartley they're going to they're just going to go on the pitch and do what they do you yeah, know? yeah and they did did you get a buzz for first team management there and then as soon as you that, that, that very first game yeah yeah but I'd worked with a lot of good managers yeah I've just mentioned them I mean Craig yeah. Bean came in and, as well in, in the year 2000 and done great between 2000 and 2004 who was that sorry, Craig Levine oh Craig Levine right yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he, 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 he was great as well he worked with so I've worked with a lot of good managers and so when that came along it was then when like Valdas was Valdas was was great you know and then Edward Malafif came in uh, so we won the cup that year and in pre-season we ended up in uh, Monte Carlo on a like a yacht a yacht a, a big yacht like five star five star hotel on water I mean, wow. we were the only people on it, it was the hearts uh, players and staff and uh, hierarchy and we we set off for, for Monaco and went round the coast in that central pay and we we, we we would stop and uh, sort of the, the wee dinghies would come out and we'd go in there and we'd get fire into the, on land go and train and then we'd come we would go after the training go back back on it and like you just you get f- the food you get everything you it was just like out of this world uh, it was amazing so uh, okay. that was a great pre-season, amazing pre-season. Was Romanov that. on the boat? Aye, he was. He was on the boat with, with the shorts with his son. on, with the trunks on. <laughs> <laughs> and what, what, how early on did you kind of sense that this was going to turn into a bit of a nightmare for Hearts? Well, there were so many things going on. I mean, we brought in 11 players one transfer window, you know, 11 players um, during Graham Rix's time. And I ended up with a lot of the guys, because uh, they obviously couldn't all, but we had quite a strong squad and quite a big squad as it was. Yeah. And we brought in like 11 players and, uh, well, the manager might even still have been during uh, George Burley's time, you know, he said, well, I can't train with all these players, you know, and he didn't fancy a few of them, you know, so all of a sudden, right, well, there's another squad who will need to, will need to train like separately yeah. and that's kind of what happened. I got to, to go with the guys and, Guys like uh, Lee Johnson, of, you know, the former Hibs manager. Yeah, yeah. Now, Lee, was, Lee was one of them who was kind of like pushed to the side because Rick said, I think Rick said brought him up, uh, if I can remember rightly. Uh, uh, so there's a, a number of even like 
and Jamie McCarthy might have been involved in that as well. There's a number of guys that kind of like go east to the side to say, uh, you know, who we, we train with. So, yeah. Yeah, so it was some, some daft times, some, some yeah. crazy times. The money they, they must have wasted. The money they must have wasted. So I was getting involved with that, yeah. And obviously, as more that came in, you're thinking, you know, I'm not quite liking this to an extent, you know, if you yeah. get a wee chance to get out. Now, Craig Levine had been doing it last He had came back to Dundee United. Uh, actually, no, Wraith Rovers. Wraith right. Rovers. He was only manager of Wraith Rovers for maybe six, eight weeks. And he got the move to Dundee United. And so I said to Craig, look, because obviously I worked with Craig for four years, could you put my name in for the job at Wraith Rovers? And so I went to the interviews and another interview and then another interview and finally got that job. So that was me coming away for Hearts and going into, uh, you know, being full-time manager myself uh, back in 2006. Yeah. 2006, 2006 yeah. 2006, that's right. 2006. Massive club, Wraith Rovers, though, eh? Aye, yeah, aye, yeah. No, thoroughly enjoyed it. I had two, two spells, yeah. How was your, so just because like a wee bit of insight, how was your first interview process? Was it tough? Interview yeah, you mean job? when you're going through like licenses and that, you, you know, they, 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 they take so much, you know, you, you never exactly know exactly what's going to happen. But I think, I think obviously it went well enough because I got another one and then another one. So yeah. The interviews you had to go for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Did you do you know that there's other guys in for that job as well? Obviously. Yeah, but I didn't know exactly who right. who was in for it, but there, but there was. I know it was quite intense. I and quite then you just get a phone call one day saying, "Yeah, job's yours." And what is that? That must be. Then I had to decide if I wanted to drop so much money in my wages. I <laughs> was it quite a big drop. Aye. Was it? Huh? I had to sell the Porsche and get a. No. <laughs> <laughs> How did you decide? We've got a good company car. You know, singing. <laughs> <laughs> How did you decide your assistant? Was it Paul back in though? No, it wasn't actually. Uh, Gary Kirk was uh, the assistant at Wraith Rovers. He had been working with Craig Levine. Now, Gary took over in the short term, and then I had known Gary so uh, for Hearts. Gary was at Hearts, and Gary's a great guy, and he's still at Hearts now. He's working now with Liam Fox, and you probably know him playing against his Bride. Yeah. Uh, uh, Gary was different class, so he was great for myself, and uh, he, he stayed, but then uh, I think Tony Dalt moved with uh, Derek McInnes. And it opened a door at Dundee United for Gary to, to move into there. Right. Uh, I think Husty was obviously there. Might have been, Tony Dot might have been first team coach or something. And then Gary went in and it left a space. Now, initially, I had Donald Park come in for about a month or so. Uh, he got a job with uh, Mixu Pat Lennon back at Hibs, which was understandable. Yeah. And that's when uh, we brought Paul in and we've kind of worked together ever since. Yeah. Wow. And he's been great. Paul's been in class. He's, uh, you know, trust him in my life and we work, we just work so so well together yeah yeah uh, what's uh, how do you look back on your first time at Ray? yeah I've won fond memories I we did delighted uh, yeah we, we got to the Scottish Cup semi-final as well won the one League One it wasn't easy to get out of League One it's no easy to get out of League One you know uh, as you know present day will testify you know five years and still in League One for for Ray Throvers well it was Three goals at it because it was there was good teams. Uh, Ross County was in Mort Morton Morton right away. Morton were the team who were were, were very good in the, that season when they were coming in the November second bottom of that league at the time. Wraith Rovers and we finished I think third. Uh, we played still in Albion. Still in was second. We the Alan Moore's team. Moore's team. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. They were a good side, and uh, we got beat in the playoff. Then the following year. Ross County were the team in Airdrie and we were up there competing with them and again we, we fell at the hurdles of the, of the playoffs so it took the third year we were nip and tuck all the season with Air United and uh, they lost the uh, they came to Starts Park eight nine games to go nine games to go and they beat us at Starts Park and they went away celebrating as if they won the league and then we won eight in a row and they lost their second last game of the season Aloha took points off them, Alan Maitland's team took points off them and we won the league with the you know second last game of the season. We were at Hamden. We we really scored Graham Weir who we had, had at Hearts previously. Right. Yeah yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and of course yeah we, we won that league and then up into the championship and we, 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 we I love my time. Both both times at, at Wraith Rovers fans were, were great. People yeah. who work we were were great. How was uh, how was Marvin Andrews to work with? Marvin was a different class, aye. Marvin, 
was one of the guys that come in with a smile on their face every day, yeah. You can, you can take life. that all day long, aye, all yeah. day long. He actually was playing with a cruciate. He actually done, a, done his knee, cruciate, and he, and, he, and he played on, and played on. He done that at Rangers as well, didn't he? He played with us. Eventually his knee had to re, redo his knee. You know, they had to rebuild the knee. Uh, but he played with it, and then he came back and played, you know, for us, for Wraith Rovers at, at that particular time. Uh, he came back and played. And then he came back and, again, did, helped us get get up so he, he he was great he was great to work with and as I say he always got a smile on his face uh, great big guy uh, great guy uh, and then return to Hearts in 2012 was the appeal obviously to get the first team manager job just too too good to turn down yeah exactly uh, too good to turn down can you talk us through how that comes about as well John we just we love this sort of insight what is it a phone call does somebody send you out yeah well I mean I was always friends with John Murray John Murray was the the head of recruitment uh, when I went to Hearts the first time around, uh, right. he had been at Falkirk with Jim and Billy. So Jim and Billy brought uh, John in. John was, you know, amazing uh, the amount of games that he would watch and go here, there, and everywhere watching games and digging up players from all over the place. And so, obviously, I worked with him, you know, and from the youth side of things as well. Uh, John took a big, uh, you know paid a big, big attention to, to the young players and the youth players and bringing them in. That was a, is also his background uh, previously, uh, along with, with, with first team. So, obviously I've moved on and, and, and done quite well. Very throwers. Uh, Hearts had just won the Scottish Cup. Uh, they were having to make cutbacks. I think the people at the higher, you know, hierarchy in Hearts probably knew that they were, they were going down financially. Right. You know, I think they knew it was only a matter of time. I mean, Romanov's bank eventually took the club down, but they were in a bad way. They had a, had a number of sort of issues of players not getting paid away over a number of years. Uh, so I think they actually knew, but the team had won the Scottish Cup. Obviously, they couldn't keep the manager. Probably a little bit of cutting back, but they, it was the same with the squad. Half the squad that won the Cup had to, had to go. Uh, they couldn't renew the, the contracts. And so they lost kind of like half the team and my job was to promote the younger players, uh, which would have been like your uh, Kevin McCarty's, uh, Jason Hawkes, Jamie Walker's, Kevin McCarty's, potentially Brad McKay's, Callum uh, Parsons, all these kind of yeah, guys yeah. were all like moving it in if you can get them to develop any, any first team players so that was a sort of the project and you know again it started quite well and again we were involved in Europe we had a great two games with Liverpool uh, lost 1-0 at uh, Tyne Castle unfortunately Andy Webster scored a, an own goal and then we go down to Anfield and uh, we find ourselves 1-0 up when David Templeton scores and Amazing. Pepe Arena you know, managed to let the ball go between his hands and through his legs and uh, to be 1-0 up with no so long to go at Anfield unfortunately for us Suarez scores late in the game and you know we go out in the you know 2-1 in aggregate type thing so yeah. they didn't play Gerrard in the first game they didn't necessarily play their top 11 in the first game but they certainly brought them out for the second game at Anfield but don't get me wrong there was a lot of good players on the pitch in the first game as well uh, I mean we acquitted ourselves fairly well considering we had, we, had, we had lost half the team yeah. you know, so but you couldn't complain you know you, you couldn't complain it was an amazing uh, experience I mean the, the pitch you know, the pitch is incredible you know not, not a bloody grass out of place yeah. I mean it was a, dressing rooms were, were, were bang average to be fair yeah. you know they were bang average there was no flush in dressing rooms uh, for the away team anyway but the pitch was an immaculate a great occasion uh, Jamie McDonald had done well for us in goals I think we had put Darren Barr on Stevie G, you know. Just, just, you can, what, just Mad Mark, Stevie can, G? Aye, <laughs> exactly, aye. Wow. Aye, exactly. And he did all right, he must did all right, he did all right, he did all right, he did all right. You know what, I'm touch the ball, Darren Barr, but just, tackling people aye, is just, fine, uh -huh. Stop him if you can. Uh -huh. And Tempo, and how did you find we Temps? He was on the podcast a couple of weeks ago. Aye, he's a different class as well, eh? He was great. And flying at the time, wasn't he? He got a move right after that, but again, things happening at uh, that Kenny club with Romeroff involved and other estate that things by the time Saturday, Sunday came up and done D at home on the Sunday by the time that come Temps was away and you know it was just one of these things obviously the club needed money they were going down the tubes uh, and 
as I say, more so doing the side of Romanus Bank was going yeah. down, you know, but... That must be so frustrating for you as a manager. Go and get a result like that, aye. not a result like that, but a performance like that, and you lose your best player the next day. Aye, well, one of, one of the good players, I. So, was there never a time where you just thought, fuck, I can't deal with this anymore? No, no, I mean, you have peaks and troughs there, you have good times, good, good times, you're winning games, everything's hunky-dory. When you're losing games, it can get, because obviously fans show their, you know, the depreciation, you know, their, their anger, whatever, and uh, that's like, that, that can be tough, but then you have to be, just be strong enough to get through it. And, you know, we had a great season last season, but we, we didn't end the season well, and of course the fans were not happy, but, you know, I had in my mind that we'll, we'll, we'll get other players in in the summer. It was always, you know, going to be, a, for me, it was always going to be two years. We wanted to do it in one year, but we knew that it would probably take two, and, it, and, and you know, we're now in a good position, and that's all it is. But, you know, it probably is, you know, to take the two. How is that pressure for fans now compared to when you first started, say, your Wraith Rovers job? Was it 2006, you said? Yeah. Uh, is there more pressure on managers now? And do you have less time? Obviously, the Hearts was about seven months, you know, between going there in the sort of June, July, and it was like February uh, when I got let go, whatever. We would managed to get to the League Cup final as well. It happened again at Livingston. We managed to get to the Challenge Cup final, and I lost my job before I got to the, the final. You better not get to a final with Falkirk, John. <laughs> you get sacked, man. <laughs> Didn't tell anyone that's it. We lost two, we lost two semis there. <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't mind telling us how you lost your job at Hearts, just get pulled in office one day and go, that's you done. It was after uh, St. Martin. St. Martin. We played St. Martin at St. Martin. We lost 2 0 on the night. We didn't have a great start. Uh, Darren Barr gave away a penalty for a corner kick, pulling a jersey or something. Cheap, 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 you know, penalty to lose. We lost another goal, it was 2 0. And uh, actually, still at the stadium that night, I would have kept it to myself. Uh, again, as I say, John Murray helped me kind of like get the job going in. Uh, and uh, it was up to John to break the news, obviously. Roman off and that wasn't there, but there was obviously phone calls went backwards and forwards. and. John said, look, that's that's it, basically. And so I kept it quiet that night so I could go home and tell the wife and the family and everything else and then went in the, the next again morning and just said your, your goodbyes and, and that, 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 that was it, basically, aye. Oh, that's tough, isn't it? Aye, it is, but that's, you know, when you're a manager, that's it's going to happen. But that was the first time it happened first to me. Because right. you know, I was a youth team coach from the under-16s up to the under 18s and then the reserve team coach was a kind of like combined job so that was 11 years you know for oh, going in there in 95 to to then 2006 so I was the duration being caretaker manager on two or three different occasions uh, I was there 11 years uh, but on the second occasion it was like seven months but that was the first time as a manager I'd been sacked because I went to Wraith Rovers and had like six years five years five and a half years there and then uh, it was seven months Approximately, we worked well, and what we did. Have you done a mind of what we did in these seven months? No, Back to the no, I would no, I didn't. No, I didn't. I just kind of like waited to try and get a job to come along, and there was approached with Livingston. And took sorry, just before that, was there any jobs you went for that you never got? And how, if, if it was, well, I went down to uh, I went to Man City for an under 14 job because right. I still felt like my background was kind of like youth, I'd done a lot in the youth, uh, so. I went, I went down there, I kind of like, I went into Harps and had a session, I had, I had a, a theme, I'm sure I had a theme to, to work on, uh, that given me that in the sort of pre, you know, interview plan, whatever you want to call it, and uh, I worked on something with some young, young boys at Harps to go down, and I went down and it was uh, theory and practical, uh, or an interview and a practical session out, and so go through that, and uh, actually, it went quite well. I thought it re went really well. And it was Mark Allen who ended up at Rangers. Right, yeah, yeah. Not so long ago, he was he was he was a top man then. And uh, eventually, you know, they they, was, they will get you back down. And then, kind of got a phone call thinking, ah, oh, you, you look like you're too first team. They think you. They thought they felt like you were too too much first team uh, than what they were looking for. And so I didn't I didn't get that job. Uh, and it was around about September time uh, that I got the job at Livingston. Did you apply for it or did they approach you? No, I got I got approached. I got approached for the job. See these two finals? Do you what? Did you sit? Did you sit and watch them? I got invited to the Hearts never invited you to the League Cup after the sack. Aye. Did they? Aye. Yeah. Did you go? Aye. 
Yep, I went, aye. How was that for you? Tough. Strange, aye, a bit strange. A bit strange, but why no? Why no? To do it, it. Aye. Uh-huh. <laughs> Did you, did you not feel bad sitting there watching your team playing the football? I wanted to be winning. I'd been at Hearts. I'd been previous eleven years there. I'd, I'd worked with the guys. You want you want them to win. You want them to win. Gary Locke, you know, and great Hearts man. You want you want them to win. You know, yeah. he, he stepped up, and you know, Darren Murray, who I'd worked with, he was still at the club, and you know, you, you want the guys to win. You know, they they've done so well to get there. You know, we're ten men against Inverness and ten men against Dundee United. We, the boys did brilliantly to get to that cup final. But the league programme wasn't brilliant, you know, we got, when we came back for Anfield that that, uh, that time, we were blinking get beat by Dundee on the on the on the Sunday, you know, yeah. which didn't go down too well. But Colin Nish, my God. I have Nishy scoring against you. It's time oh. to on her. Uh, and then you leave Livingston and a different job comes about. You end up as a scout at Celtic. Yeah. Uh, were you kinda of done with management at that point? Or did you think no you were done. done at that point? No, no done, no done. But probably needed a little bit of security or something, a bit of long term in it. Uh, very, very fortunate, you know. So again, to be fair, John Murray uh, made a call to John Park. They were, they were. John Murray's done all right. Although they were good buddies, aye, did yeah. actually. Although they were good buddies at the same time, one worked with Hearts, one worked with Hibs. There was a lot of sort of rivalry between them as well. Uh, obviously, John was at Celtic, but, yeah. but when they were in, when John was, uh, John Park was. At Hibs and John was at, at Hearts, who so were, you know, at each other all the time, probably, you know. So, uh, but, you know, so I think John made a phone call to Peter Lowell to say, I will give him an interview, you know, you've got to go through that. So I got an interview and, and, and I got the job. So it was scouting, it was scouting, I and mean, I, I, you were all over the place, you know, but I enjoyed it. It was really, really good and a, and a great insight into working with the guys within that, in the background of that, as to how much work goes into how they, look at players now when I went in there it was in January of 2015 and that was when they signed Gary McKay Stevens, Shorty Armstrong, uh, <laughs> Nadir Shifty, yes, aye, right. you know and uh, that was just that was just happening just as as, as, as I kind of like got employed there so it was great to see how in depth like they were analysing Armstrong and McKay Stevens and Shifty against players and you know comparing them right. as to what they're going to bring I dare say the manager would maybe have to put that to the board to say this is why we should be or maybe John Park's got to take it to the manager to say this is why we want to bring these players into the football club Yeah, you know? yeah. So was your job purely recruitment for the first team? Recruitment, yeah, recruitment yeah, for the first team, yeah, recruitment and again every, every weekend and not only weekends but even midweek games you're away watching but it was What were some of the games that you got to go to? Any, any big ones? Well, if I was moving on from that because when I was started doing the opposition analysis, when Brendan came in, I moved out of recruitment and went into opposition analysis. Who who done that? Was that your decision or was that Brendan? Brendan's, yeah. That but did you just hit it off straight away? I think so, yeah. I think so. Yeah, he maybe I think he did well. He did eventually. I remember me from Anfield and uh, the Hearts game, you know. Uh, and so you come in at a time where it's Champions League and the games that we were at, you know, to watch was fantastic. Like obviously. Within your group, I think there was Bar- Ma- Man City, Barcelona. That's right, that group. Yeah. Borussia Mönchengladbach. Right. Borussia Mönchengladbach. Right. Borussia Mönchengladbach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there was Anderlecht, PSG and Bayern Munich. You know, these were coming some of the, the groups and you're going... I used to go and watch a youth game in the afternoon, like if it was Bayern Munich v PSG, for example. It probably wasn't that, I'm just saying. Yeah. yeah. Uh, hypothetically. Because uh, they weren't in the same group, I don't think. Uh, yeah, I would watch the the, the under the youth team game, and I would do a little report for like Sean Maloney. I've done a little report for him and whoever else, Tommy McIntyre, who were taking the mm. teams who were going to go and play these teams, and I would do reports for them. And the, the, when they came back, but obviously the first team was a priority. And then you would go to the game at night, uh, and these were magnificent games to, to go and watch. You can't e- no pick up things. You can't e- go to the games and. No and, learn. No learn. Yeah, yeah, otherwise there's something wrong with you because it's just like you've got to be a sponge and watching the games and taking everything on board. But I'm working, you know, so you're actually trying to pick up loads and loads of things. Uh, you know, in some so, uh, difficult, yeah, yeah, yeah. difficult for, for Celtic. It was always a difficult, you know, domestically, you know, invincibles. But, you know, playing in Europe's a different ball game when you come up against Barcelona and Neymar's and... And these type of players, nah, you can Marcus. play as many tactics as you want, but if Neymar goes to buy three of your players, then you're fucked, aren't you? Exactly, <laughs> aye. Which you know, if it's not him, it's Messi. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, so it's very, 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 very. How difficult. in depth would your analysis be, John? Like, 
What, what sort of stuff would you be looking for? Would it be playing it for goal kicks? What, how they press? Yeah, building through the phases of the pitch. What, what do they do here? What do they do there? What do they do there? What do they do there? You know, uh, offensive transitions, defensive transitions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Going through that. I mean, Joe, uh, Brendan, uh, along with Chris Davis, they came from Liverpool. They had a template how they wanted things done. They had they had that template, and it was a matter of working to that template. So right. you very quickly knew exactly. But when we would go into meetings, whether it be European games or domestic games, because you're you're doing domestic games as well, it would be a Thursday for a Saturday game, and we would spend an oh, easy hour, maybe over an hour, going over the uh, what what we put together, because it ended up being like a glossy, almost a glossy magazine, because. The guys in there, Craig Dunbar. I know Craig, good great. guy. Aye, ah, brilliant. Uh -huh. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, Big Paul McLeish at the time. Paul's moved on a little bit. Uh, Stevie Gormel was the analyst. Those guys, but everyone put their heads together to come up with the the, the analysis, video analysis, but also uh -huh. you know a uh, pamphlet, a, a glossy magazine almost with everything in it. Right. Uh, but the guys, you know, like Brendan, Chris Davis, John Kennedy, Stevie Woods, Cole Puri. Uh, a long way, as I say, Craig, myself, Paul McLeish, Stevie Gormel, we, we would all be involved in that. And you can't even know, learn with the questions that they're asking. And you you learn, and at, at Lennox Town, it's a bit like this. You could go, you know, I was never on the training ground, or maybe it was once, but never ever on the training ground, never had a, hardly a, a, a tracky on another. It was an office job, but you could sit in here and you could tell what was happening in the training, you know. So I could do my job, and I would always go at the, the training just to see, you know, what they're doing. So I was learning both sides of it. The, the recruitment was great. To, to work within the recruitment with John Park was great, again, alongside, you know, Craig Dunbar and, and Paul McLeish, these guys were different class. Yeah. Uh, yeah. By the way, I, I actually got the job that Hoosty left, and then when I left, Hoosty got the job <laughs> back. I was just going to say, Hoosty's not doing that job, Hi, hi. yeah, just <laughs> throw that in as well. Uh, so, recruitment, so that learns you, so even for me now, when I'm looking at games, I can I put that recruitment head on, and then you go into the opposition and you're looking at the opposition, so I can put that hat on as well, the, op the opposition. Do you think that job's made you a better manager, Absolutely, obviously. one million percent. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, you get, you get your eyes opened. As, yeah. as was, uh, was Brendan Reuters obviously back then, he was incredible to say, like, was, was, he top absolutely. Le was he top level? Uh? Abs for me, aye, absolutely. And, and uh, what, what, what was he different for other managers? What was different about him? In the detail that they would go into, and I saw they mentioned young Jack Lyons, you know, he brought young Jack Lyons and Jack was uh, doing... Uh, he was be writing up stuff and going on, on Twitter. Twitter, is this right? Is Twitter this the guy that's writing yeah, stuff on absolutely. Twitter? Absolutely. And I think it was Martin, Martin McBride, Martin at Celtic, he worked in the youth camp. Martin Miller? Aye, Martin Miller, yeah. He had said to the guy for Brendan Rogers, have you seen what they're putting on this Twitter or whatever we be, you know? And the managers looked at this type of thing and said, mm -hmm. need to get him in. Then he brought him in and the next thing gave him a job and... Uh, Jack had a great knowledge, uh, just a f football geek type thing, you know. And yeah. Brendan took him to Leicester, and he's back at back at Celtic now as well. So uh, is he good, John? Eh? Is aye, he? absolutely, aye, absolutely. He's God, phenomenal brain. Yeah, phenomenal that brain. That's crazy. Yeah. So you're, you're learning all through these times, these all, the, all these people in meetings that you're involved in. Uh, you're, you're just learning, 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 and of course. You get back into management and you want to put a lot of this kind of like information you're getting in. Every Celtic player that played through that period of time would learn so much, you know, like Scotty Brown uh, going in there at Fleetwood and now at Celtic. There's no doubt the stuff he's learned is going into what he's doing now at air and in the weeks and months, whatever he used to come, uh, will be a lot of stuff that he'll have taken from. And every player will, will, be, will be taking that as well. Who was the best opposition player that you watched the, the whole time you scouted? Who gave the best performance on the night when you were sitting there? Hmm. Really difficult question, that. So I get paid the big bucks, but that's the skin of the joke. Yeah, I mean, it, it's easy to go and say Messi, isn't it? But like, I can watch a game and you're saying, he's a lazy sod. He's not doing that. Uh -huh. When the ball goes to his feet and the whole thing changes, yeah, and like, I'm very much like, work, work, yeah. you got to work, you got to work. And even I hear Brendan at the weekend going, we need to run. You know, we need to run. If we didn't run, we're, you know. Uh, so, I'm, I'm when we're watching Atletico Bilbao against Barcelona and thinking, you're a lazy wee sod. You know, but then the ball will end at his feet. And the next thing uh, it'll be in the back of the net. And it's just like different class. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Different class. So, I mean, for that for that point of view, you would say him the way that, the way that, he, the way that he plays. Uh -huh, you know, incredible. But, uh, but there are loads. You know, but 
Would you say, so see, see, see having that job at Celtic as well, would you say your style changed as well in terms absolutely. of as a manager, how your team... Yeah, absolutely. 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 You could go through, like, George Billy's team was, a, was like, a very uh, attacking team. You know, really, really attacking team. Uh, prior to that, I would say Jim and Billy were very good at getting the team to play. They were very good at getting... They got the best out of their players. They were good man management. And uh, tactically, they were good. Craig came in and was very... Discipline within it, four four two, uh, mainly, mainly yeah. not not exclusively, but mainly and uh, really well organised, really organised, really structured. Uh, Learned a lot, a hell of a lot for for like for like Craig, and then says so Robo got got, got, a got, deal. got a deal, a bad yeah, yeah. bad hand, you know, type thing. It was a bit of a deal, yeah, probably a better way of putting it, yeah, and then. Uh, George came in, but the players that came in were just took us to another level. And again, very at entertaining, very attacking team. Uh, so you're, you're learning for, for everyone. But then, more recently, having worked at Celtic and picking up on all this and the way that Brendan worked and the tactical uh, phases was like top notch, you know, more than what I'd ever learned yeah. previously. And you do take it, you'd be crazy not to, but you need the players as well. Within your level, within your level, you need to You need to have the players to play that way. You will get players that will get, you, over a period of time, you'll make them better, but then it's time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want to get, you need to try and bring the players in as best as you can for the money you've got to get the results. And I feel that's what, without blowing a trumpet, I think that's what we've kind of done here myself and Paul. I think that's what we've done here. We yeah. managed to get the players in to play the way we want to play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, so, so when you were doing that job, obviously when you weren't away, for, uh, away watching games, you could sit at Lennox Town and watch Absolutely, everyday yeah. training. And, yeah, yeah. And was there, a, was there an idea in the back of your head when I, because of how they play, I want to get back in there and try and implement this, I think I could do this? Absolutely, of course. Was there the whole time? Uh, Absolutely, of course. Yeah, of course. So when did that time come where you thought, right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave this scouting job and go and try and do this? When uh, the job came up at Wraith Rovers and I... I applied for it. I applied for it before previously, and they didn't really, they didn't take it on. Uh, but on this occasion, they did, and uh, yeah, and we, we set the wheels in motion to to get back in. Was there a bit of nervousness in there about going and playing that different way because you'd never done it with a first team before? You'd never done it with a group of players before. Well, I knew some of the players because even although I'd been away for quite some time, you know, guys like Lou Vaughan were still there. Good player, uh, good player, great player, amazing player. Get him here next year. <laughs> he just signed the new contract. Oh, I'm sorry, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Four, four cruciates later, you know. Yeah, he's uh, done quite, amazing. Quite, quite frightening, back. quite frightening. I, amazing player, absolutely amazing. So, uh, yeah, guys like him, and I knew, I knew a few of the players that were there. That uh, I knew you could go in there and get them playing, you know. And obviously, again, starting to bring. One of the best things I did was bring Reagan Henry to what a player. Reagan Henry to every throw. He was brilliant. Oh, player, incredible! Yeah. Absolutely. So you took you took him for a winger because I always remember him as a kid. He was a white yeah. player. But you took him at Rafe. He yeah, played we, central. He but that really time good. I brought him in. He was playing centre mid, and the ball was tied to his foot, and what a range of pass! Yeah, oh, just, just a good boy. A lovely football player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. So see, see again. I don't want to go into it too much, but when you were, did you have a full training plan in place of like when I get a job now? This is how I'm training. This is how we're working. More or less. That's amazing, isn't it? More or less, I. How or long less. did that take you to come up with? Mm. Just over the course of your whole time at Celtic? Aye. Uh -huh. Aye, yeah. I'm not saying I'm right, doing every training session, I'm not going to say that, but you've got a fair idea. I mean, the ones you like, the, the ones you never like. Liked. I will see the. We, we do it here now, we do it now here. We, we, we can put the training up. We show the players the training, right? So there's a piece of paper there, and the training will be like in different sections. There'll be like maybe four pitches pitch there, pitch there, pitch there. But this is what we're doing here the warm up. Whatever it is, a bit of passing, possession, games, tactical work will be laid out. So, you know, you get a fair idea of the structure of what's going to be happening. And uh, so you might be oh, playing against a low block. So, how are we going to beat a low block? Celtic's going to play against a low block. Mace weeks. Yeah. You know, Mace weeks. So, that's be topical all the time. Ways to find uh, the weakness in the opposition. So, these were all things that were into, like, uh, the. And my job, opposition analyst, is like trying to find the weaknesses in the opposition. You want to come up with three, three weaknesses, three areas to exploit in every game. It's quite difficult against Barcelona. Three kicks to one duck. So anyway, uh, so uh, 
So you can even know the structure of what they're doing. You can have a wee look on, oh, that's what they're doing that for, you know, and you can you yeah, can take it in and then it's up to you then to devise it. And then once you get your job, because it, it'll be the same thing, it might not be done quite as well as what they did it, but you can have something that's very, very similar. Yeah. Was there a worry that players in League One wouldn't be able to play and train that way? Well, yeah, but when I knew very quickly, I knew very quickly at Wraith Rovers when we went back in, I mean, Kevin Nisbet was there, Kevin, I mean, who's... Wow. Now at Millwall and you know broke into the Scotland squad, played two or three games, or whatever, however many it is, you know, uh, and like I say, Louis Vaughan, they, they guys are going to pick things up just like that, you know. Yeah, yeah, Kevin yeah. had never broke through to any extent at that time. We had started the season really well at Wraith Rovers, and he just kind of like continued to score goals upon goals upon goals upon goals, you know, bit ability, you know, loads and loads and loads of ability, and, yeah, yeah. you know. There were a number of players like that who had good ability, so they're, they're going to pick it up really quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, first season, never went up. Second season, you did. Did it, Was it maybe due to the ch dramatic change that it took you a couple of years? We we got beat in the playoff by Queen of the South. Right. And they got the big striker that was, went to QPR. Come on, Scotland, Scotland striker, Dykes, aye. Dykes. Aye, you know, yeah. so they were a decent side, Stephen Dobie and him, Yeah, they were they were a decent side, Yeah, they were a decent side, so we got beat in the playoffs, and uh, that, that kind of done us, you know, we, I can't remember exactly where, where, we, where we, we finished that, 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 that year, uh, we beat four for four for four for finished second, we finished third, right. we beat fourth in the playoff game, and in the final of the playoff we played Queen of the South. They beat us. They beat us. They beat us over the two, the two legs. But they were decent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were They're decent. not a bad first season. Uh, Aaron Arnott's with me at East Cobrine, a lovely Aye. boy. Yeah. He says to ask you about the time Ross Matthews tried to switch a play in training. Oh. Do you remember it? No. <laughs> it hit you in the head. All oh, right. And you got all the boys in, you went, right, everyone come in. <laughs> get your laughs out of the way. Everyone started fishing and I was like, right, let's get back to training. <laughs> Do you remember that now? No, I can't actually. He's a lovely no. boy, Arn Arnott. Yeah, is he? Uh -huh. Aye. He's doing well. He's He's got himself on the team now, he's doing really well. Did you put Nisbet into that team or was he already in the team? Barry Smith signed him. Barry Smith signed him, but it was fairly again early in the season, it was September we got the job. And so uh, Barry signed him and he had started to score, you know, a few goals and he just pff, goals galore all that season. Yeah. Great player, isn't he? Technically a great player. Technically yeah, yeah, yeah. a great player. I got the lot. Got the lot. Uh -huh. I really did I'm not just saying this, I really enjoyed how your ref teams but yeah. we used to play, it was a proper football game, like playing it for the back. Yeah. Try to out outplay each other, really enjoyed it. Uh, and then you take the Falkirk job. Yeah. This had been a club that had been, a, a, no trouble, but in terms of the kind of atmosphere around the place, was was there a, any part of that that maybe gave you hesitation about taking the job? Nah, you, they're demanding, they are demanding, they're, they're hard to please. Uh, but they've had like good success and they believe that they shouldn't be here and they should be there and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. We've got to live up to that. Yeah. They've had bad years. It's up to us to come in and, and turn that round. I think they recognise and, and respect and to some extent appreciate you know, what we've done so far. There's a good bit of work to get done but we understand that. No be the first time that you know, myself or Smudger have went to Brockville or, or played out here. We played, as in like Wraith Rovers played out here in the Scottish Cup against and won out here. Uh, in the Scottish Cup the season before uh, we came and we, we were winning one now Ross Matthews scored actually and uh, Regan Tomlin got sent off and we played with 10 men and then they were equalised and then we went on to score to, to win the game with 10 men and uh, yeah we've watched games here and so you, you understand that the fans are demanding but you've got to have big shoulders eh? you've got to have big shoulders and say aye but what happens if you go there and you get that right, right. you're going there and I think you've got to look at the positives and yeah what a club they've got here what a, what a fan base they can have here you know and you know you look out here right now and how good would it be to be making a success of this and there's another stand across there and it completes the stadium you know and alright at the minute it's a pipe dream but who knows what's going to happen if you get get this going yeah. the fans are backing the club by uh, this is Tuesday, there's 4,700 tickets sold for this game on Saturday, Amazing. you know, and you know, that's going to go above 5,000 easily, easily, and that's no counting Hamilton. So, you know, this is this is going to be 5,000 plus on Saturday, and if we were getting this team into the championship and being at the right end of the championship, 
you know, this place will be foot thereafter. Yeah, I, I did have a few good games at Rafe, but I've had a few shockers out there. Aye. Shockers, mate. Pitch is huge, yeah. Huge, it's huge, aye. Huge. Absolutely. See, when you're getting the run around out there, it's aye. tough. Yeah, which is a big part of it for us because we've got so much speed. And so there's, we'll find space. We'll eventually yeah. find space at League One level, in, in particular, with the guys that we've got, and with the great respect, you know, there's four four full time teams, the other six are part time teams, and so you know. However, I, I didn't always think of that because I both made a mockery of part time and full time. You know, yeah, well, they could you know. pay boys who have got good jobs money that they would never take full time, so it works both ways, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah absolutely, yeah. Uh -huh. absolutely. You know, part time. You'll never speak about that, do they? No, no, yeah. no, no. They're, no they're, it's not worth their while to go. No, I think it's tough okay. for teams in league one to get pl good players to come full time because Aye. the part time clubs pay that much money. Absolutely. Uh -huh. Yeah, absolutely. No, That's a big party as well. Yeah. Um, it works both ways, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What about personal? In fact, I want to ask you this just like last couple of questions. Do you still get, pl in this day and age to when you first started, do you get still get players that come and chat at the manager's door? Does that still happen? Oh, aye. A lot. How do, how do you deal with that sort of side of things? <laughs> it just depends, eh? <laughs> it just depends. It just depends. But if you've got, like, a, you've got a conscience, eh? You've got a conscience, so you know that somebody's no playing, they're not going to be happy over a period of time. Yeah. But you can't really do an awful lot if the guy who's playing in his jersey is doing it exceptionally well and the team's winning. And sometimes there's a lot of recognition by players as well. It'll become, like, a little bit more... Uh, then you really go looking for confrontation. There's no point it will come it will come to you. So then you yeah. really go looking for confrontation. Uh, whereupon the team's no doing so well and you've no changed the team and somebody's been doing really well in training or went on in the game and you know made an impact in the game and for yeah. some reason you've no picked them. And sometimes there's a fine margin, you know, with regards to oh he did really well, you should really put him in and you didn't really do it. So then you're like kind of half expecting a knock on the door and you just got to hold your hands up at times and just say, look at it. There was nothing in the call. I mean, yeah. I'm not suggesting that they'll walk out and be delighted, like, delighted but... I appreciate your honesty. Aye, but quite often, if in these situations, quite often we'll speak to the players on a, on a Friday. And certainly if we're leaving players out and they've been in the team for a period, I think if you're a player and there are players who will go, be in and out, in and out, in and out, not going to do that all the time because you're, you recognise that you've not actually done enough to stay in the team. Yeah. But if it's somebody who's been playing in the team fairly regularly and is like casting stone and he finds himself knowing the team, then you would certainly uh, have a chat prior to that. Is that the hardest part of managing, picking your team on a Saturday? The hardest part, which I've not really had too much of this uh, here, is because we've not got too many like apprentices, but probably the hardest part of the, the job is the day when you've got to tell a young apprentice that you, they'll not be... Like going yeah, to continue deal. at this football club, not to say you can't go somewhere else and continue, and, and you probably say it. I'm going to do say it. I'm like going prove us wrong, going go and be. Now will make us happier if you go on to do it. But we didn't think you're ready at this moment in time to play in this football club. So I didn't have that too often here because we've not had apprentices. But yeah. we we do now have, you know, that we have four or five apprentices now who you know are halfway through, uh, or just over halfway through their first year. Uh, they've got two years but that would be the hardest day that would be the hardest day when you've got to tell somebody that their future doesn't lie there and they need to go and find their future somewhere else that is the hardest day yeah 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 tough that uh, just last couple uh, so right, you keep going if you want typical day for you time you usually in here time you usually leave it I'm in somewhere between half seven and quarter to eight in the, in the morning wow. put the computer on start looking at training if I've not already done it the night before but more often like come in and start looking at what, we, what do we have to do today? What, what boxes do we need to tick today? You know, sometimes it's because of that particular day. Like, Monday's a recovery day, so we're working with other guys. Today is like strength day, a hard day, but we're also looking tactically at things as well so we can mix it. It's not just going to all be like endurance, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or whatever. And then uh, Thursday's going to be still quite a, a high intensity, but not maybe so Never long. So long. Uh, shorter, sharper. And more detail as to what we want to do. Friday's light. One yeah, for the Saturday. Small boxes. Everyone loves the small boxes on a Friday. That's amazing, isn't it, them, John? Brilliant. Get me in here on the the, yeah. the, the boxes. Come along. We sometimes yeah. obviously need a wee play. Think, what about yeah. uh, what about uh, how you relax away from football? Is it hard to switch off, or do you uh, do you find that? I don't find that hard. I uh, found it hard. Uh, I do find that hard. Jim Jeffries was great. He loved his golf. I'm starting to play a, a little bit more golf. No anywhere near as much as Jim. Jim loved his golf. Uh, and I think you do have to like switch off. So I'm yeah. getting a little bit better at that. Uh, but what about after a defeat? Do you sleep? Nah, nah, hopeless. Yeah, hopeless. Aye. How does the wife find that? As you know, take it. Aye. Uh, <laughs> aye. What age are you now? Sixty-two. Wow. Aye. 
How many many years are you going to go on for? As many as I can, you know, it's not always by choice, eh? I've just signed a new two-year contract with Selling Paul, so they're delighted to do that. Yeah, so hopefully nice. we can get to 2006. Hopefully the club are in a good way and they'll maybe extend it even by further if they've been successful. Uh, if no, you know, I think CV stacks up uh, fairly well. Uh, oh, you're working at another job, yeah. So I, I want to say John Murray will get you a job somewhere. <laughs> he's in the game now as well. <laughs> nah, I, I want to keep going for as long as I can because you just never know. And once you go out, you might never get back in. So I'm, I'm wanting to keep going. Uh, Do you set yourself a personal ambition of where you'd like to manage one day? I still go, think I've got unfinished business in the top league in Scotland. You know, uh, it would be great to take a, take a club there. You know, it would be great to take Falkirk there. That would be like the dream. And it's not impossible. Yeah, it would be the dream. It's not impossible. I need the board to be uh, a bit generous with the budget, but it's not impossible. Brilliant. John, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks, mate. Cheers, Simon. I'm enjoying right, it. Guys. Thanks Cheers, very much. Thank, Thank you. you.